Hi, this is Janet Wakelin with RemarkablyCreated.com. In today's edition of One Take Wonder Videos, we're going to look at making mixed media jewelry, or specifically pins in this instance. And what we're going to feature is Stampin' Up's new coaster board. So let's go ahead, jump right in, and let's get started. Today's work surface is going to be a little messy because there's so many components and pieces, but I hope that um, you'll be able to follow along despite all of the pieces around us. So Stampin' Up's new coaster board comes eight sheets to a package and you can see here that it is six inches by and I almost forgot this, six inches by 12 inches right yep six inches by 12 inches there's eight sheets to a package it's a nice cross between cardstock and chipboard it's very very porous and takes ink very well so it's going to be great for watercoloring and I'm going to show you a couple of ways to add color to it but because it's a nice weight between chipboard and um, cardstock it also die cuts really easily with the framelits and I simply created a sandwich using the magnetic platform um, just a nice traditional sandwich to make these cuts with the framelits so a couple of ways to color them let's go ahead and let's just temporarily move this piece out of the way we will bring it back because it also incorporates a really cool tip for you but let's go ahead and take one of these and we'll take our snowflake and we're going to lay it direct to the pad just take some piece of paper fold it over I love our 11 by 17 paper for this reason because it helps keep my hands somewhat clean and there you go you can see and then you can just if there's areas that you need to kind of dip it in a little bit more press a little bit harder you can definitely start to add more ink, but you can see that just by taking it direct to pad, you can add ink. By doing so, um, it's going to absorb a lot of ink and will be damp, and so you're going to want to set it aside to let it dry so that your elements will stick just a little bit better. So that's one way that you have of adding ink. Another way would be to use a brayer and just simply brayer ink across. You can also take a sponge or a sponge dauber and daub ink on another way of keeping your hands clean I love these, they remind me of those um, bugles that you can eat we used to put them on our fingers and pretend like we were witches especially at Halloween just the fun little memories that you have as kids so let's just go ahead and we'll just you can add the ink and then the nice thing about a dauber is that you can come up here around the edges and you can get those white edges that you see on that. So that's another way that you have of adding ink. And then a third way of adding ink, this is our Encore pads. We have them in silver and gold and you can simply just brush them across and add your color just like that. and gives you a nice silver background and this is how I did the, the pin that I will um, be featuring and finishing and the one that I had in my hands in the opening of the video. And again, you can go around the edges. Now the Encore pad, you can speed up the drying process by heat setting it with the heat tool or with the holidays coming, just simply set up an assembly line and make a bunch of these because they do make great gifts or they're great items at vendor fairs. And so you just set up an assembly line, do a bunch of them, and they'll start to dry naturally as you're um, working on an assembly line process. Just a couple others there. I just did a little bit of light gold. There I have um, our Perfect Plum more Coastal Cabana, Crushed Curry, Soft Suede, so you can just see some fun ways to add color to them. So now once you have color and you have um, the image and the style, style that you want, let me bring this in, now comes the fun part and that's adding all, oops, well we're going to be one less, all of the different fun embellishments to your projects. It's just a matter of simply going through your craft stash, stash, which is what makes this project an actually great project, because you get to use up all of those items that you've been hoarding and holding on to um, for whatever reason. So you can just start to, you can even stamp a couple of words to incorporate into it. So you can just have those images. And I've got um, a little safety pin. I took one of our clips and cut the ampersands out because they're pretty hot right now. And then what I like to do is I like to take crystal effects and there's no right or wrong way to really do anything. There's always just lots of variations, which is one of the reasons why I love stamping up and crafting and creativity because we can achieve the same results many times through different processes. So it's, sometimes it's a matter of what you own at home. It's a matter of who you saw first teach it. Sometimes it's a matter of how you've adapted it to your personal style and skill levels. So I've just put a little bit of um, crystal effects on it. And now I'm just going to simply start to place these and actually go back. So I've got a little bit of crystal effects and then I also like to work with a 
tool gun. I knew the glue gun was there for a reason. And they are called One Take Wonder videos for a reason. And you're just going to start to play with them. And you're just going to start to add your elements. You can build them up high. Make some um, height to them. Just like that. This is an old antique tag. I miss those. I'm uh, glad I have a stash of them. Go in and add another flower in here. Found a cute clip in my, my stash of goodies. Let's add a button over here. So we're just going to kind of keep adding until you're happy with the way that it looks. And again, it's going to be personal. And my guess is no two will ever look the same. And we'll just add this little vintage piece here. And where's my word thanks? I wanted to incorporate a word because it's a leaf. And think of leaves, I think of Thanksgiving and fall. So we're just going to add our word in here. And let's tuck that in there like that. And I love these little dahlias. I think they're perfect for this. Kind of mimic sunflowers when we think of the fall time. So again, you're just going to pick and choose all kinds of fun elements to add to your project. Just like that. Okay, and let's add our ampersand because I had already mentioned about them being kind of hot. So we'll just do that. Now all these little strings, if you want, you can take a heat tool and go over and it will melt the little strings if you're not wanting that look or wanting them in your project. Just like that. So I've got all my little elements added. Now just to back up just a second, sometimes some of your elements have little legs on them. You can buy little clippers or if you have the heavier scissors, you're just going to hold on to them, give a good snip and snip those legs off. And make sure you have a, a vacuum cleaner handy in your craft room. So that's how you'll do that. And you have all of your pieces just like that ready to go. Now your final step, and let's bring these back in, and we'll put this one on now, is that you're going to want to totally coat it with crystal effects. And you then want to add a little bit of glitter to fill in your holes and things like that. This board is just a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. It's an insert that comes with a lot of our different cardstocks. I simply hot glued bottle caps on top of that, and that gives me a chance to allow these to sit and allows the crystal effects to run off of them. And so I can go ahead now and I can just start to coat this with my crystal effects. And again, it's just going to run off. And I'm not going to do this whole one. I can come back and do that in just a second. But again, that little tip of just getting them raised and up is a nice little tip for you. And you're just going to come in, and like I said, you're just going to coat it. And it will start to dry clear, and it's going to give it a nice um, kind of glossy look to it once it's all dry. But you'll get the idea. So we're just going to go ahead. Well, you know what? I'm this far. Let's finish what we started. I'm just going to... You can also um, smooth it out with a brush if you want to, kind of brush it around, get it in the little nooks and crannies, just using a little foam brush. So you can just, and you want to just make sure that you get, get everything coated because that's also going to help seal it and help keep them on your spot just like that. And I'll go back in and I'll add a little bit more. But you get the idea. And then you're just going to let it dry for how, however long it takes to dry. It will vary based on the temperature in your house and the humidity level. Um, I have found working in my craft room, which is in the basement, that things take a little bit longer to dry down here. So again, you can see that. Now to get the glitter on it, this is the one that we started at in the video. You can see that I have outlined it with rhinestones. I love that Stampin' Up's rhinestones and pearls have these long strings of pearls and rhinestones, and I tend to hoard these, and now I know why, because they're perfect for outlining. But you're also going to see here that I have some areas that are a little open and exposed. It's the silver framelit image, and so I'm just going to add a little bit of crystal effects into those areas first, and then I'm going to take some of our new silver, really fine glitter and a couple lots of bonus tips for you today if you're not a big fan of making messes I love really cheap litter pans and I call them glitter um, from the dollar store they're perfect for working on and you can just go ahead and 
use this as a powder tray. It gives you a lots of surface and I don't have to worry about hitting it or not hitting it. And all I'm doing is working with the with the, the glitter and I'm just filling in those areas that were a little exposed, just like so. And now I'll go back and I'll coat the entire thing with crystal effects. And then one last tip as we finish up today for you was a great tip. Wonderful lady by the name of Kelly Perky um, gave me this tip years ago. She's a master pin maker. And one of the ways that she um, finishes her pins off is instead of adding a traditional pin back, she uses a magnet. And then you're just simply able to um, put the washer behind it. And that way you're not poking holes, especially in a nice blouse or sweater. Now, obviously, if you had a pacemaker, you wouldn't want to use a magnet. But it's just another option for people that don't want to have holes in their nice blouses and things like that is to finish it off with a magnet. So have fun creating your mixed media pins. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Have a great day and God bless you.